Ja, ik ben bij zijn recession, dus boerder, beseft er, ik maak hem op. Dat geeft alles, geeft alles. Ja, ja, Edim, Edim, Shenterfa, Beavnes, Uffetor, Abba, Shaul, Avner. Ja, ja, A, Edoda, Lebet, Din. This means that the Bailey should bring witnesses, Edim. That the Bahama was small through circumstances beyond his control, and based on their testimony is exempt from liability. Abu Shal Ahmed, the word aid should not be interpreted as a as witness, but as a mod. Accordingly, the Bailey should immediately bring the Adada to court in order to appraise its current value. Corpse is what carcass is Adada, sorry. My love, the ha came Kemi plegi, the mar seva, the god nevila de netsik, hui, the mar seva, the metsik, hui, what? Is it not so that they disagree about this dwar? Maris, uh, the mar seva, Abba Shaul, holds that he lost due to the diminishing value of the Adada is sustained by the injury, by the injury. By the injured party, and so there is a need to praise its value immediately in order to correctly assess how much of, how much the one liable for the damage must pay. The first animal that the loss is due to the diminishing value of the carcass. No, holds that the loss due to the diminishing value of the carcass is sustained by the one liable for the net because the tower granted him ownership of it. La de Choli Alma de Netzig, the Haha Betorach Nevila Kemi Plegi. The Gimu rejects this. La, everyone agrees. The Choli agrees that the loss due to the diminishing value of the Adada, the carcass, is sustained by the injured party since he owns it, and here they disagree concerning who must go. To, 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 who must go to the effort of retrieving the carcass and transporting it to the court to be appraised? We had Nia Achorim Achorim Avmerim. Menian, Menian, Menia, Menian, Shar, Bar, Habar, Lehaulut, Lehaulut, Shor, Nebar, Nebar, Talmud, Lomar, Kesev, Kesev, Yeshiv. Leva, leva, lim, leva, leva, lim, the hamot. And so it is taught in the Baraita. Others say, from where is it derived that it is incumbent upon the owner of the bar to raise the shoot from his bar after it was killed, after his heart gets performed into it? The Pasuk states, the owner of the bar shall pay. He shall restore money to its owner, and the carcass shall be his. They read the term and the carcass as the second subject of the term he shall restore. It therefore indicates that the one liable for the netzik must restore the carcass to the injured party by retrieving it. The fact that this Thomas is introduced with the phrase others say suggests that it stands in opposition to another Toma. That other Toma apparently holds that the owner of the injured behemma is responsible for retrieving the carcass. Amir liya abayim lerava hai torach nevila haichi demi. Abay Amir liya rava. What are the circumstances in which the one liable for the netzik is required to go to this effort to retrieve the carcass from the bar? Elima deva veira shoa shoa shoya shoya zotsa zotsa veaguda veaguda shoya shoya arvea arvea ki tarach. Bet nefshia tarach 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 tarach. If we say that while inside the bar the carcass is with a dinar, and when it is at the edge of the pit, since it is more accessible, its market value increases and its worth for and is worth four dinars. And when the one liable for the netzik expands, the effort to retrieve the carcass is expanding the effort for its own sake, since by increasing the value of the carcass reduces its own liability. Therefore, he will certainly retrieve it of his own accord, and if not, and it is not necessary for the target to require him to do so.
It is not necessary to require him to retrieve the carcass in a case where, while still inside the bar, the carcass is with one dinar. And when it is at the edge of the bar, despite being more accessible, it is still worth one dinar. Since this is of no benefit to him to retrieve it, the tower had required him to do so. When me I kakehai go gauna 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 ein beha amri ein shi keshura bemata bed sodse kesuza keshura tashura bedvara bed sutsa. The more you get the shade. But if there even but is there even a case like this where despite being more accessible its marked value does not change? The Gemura answers yes. As people say a beam of wood in the air in the city shall sell sells for a dinar. And the beam of wood in the Sada also sells for a dinar, despite the fact that it needs to be transported from there to the city. Amr Shmuel Ain Shemin La Legenev La Legeselun Ela Lenet Sekin Beani Avmer Af Leshuel La Af 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 Leshuel Beaba Modali Shmuel Avmer The practice of the court is then is that when a behemoth or other it or other items or other items stole then is damaged the dice, the court does not appraise its current value and assign ownership of it to its owner, in order that the perpetrator should have to pay only the difference between its prior value and its current value, neither for the sake of a thief nor for the sake of a robber. Rather, the thief or Ganev, the robber, requires ownership of the carcass or damaged item, compensates the owner for its prior value. The court appraised the item of all carcass and the down for damages, and it's a key as the Gemura explained above. And I say that they appraised the item or behemoth even for a borrower who borrowed an item and while it was in his possession it became damaged, or borrowed a behemoth and while it was in his possession, possession it died. And Abba, meaning Graf, concedes to me. I buy a lehu. Hachi keamer af le shuel shemin beaba moda li. Al de le ma hachi keamer. Beani avner. Af le shuel ayen shemin beaba moda li. The dilemma was raised before them. It is what Shmir is saying. The court appraises the value of an item of a carcass even for the sake of a borrower. And Abba concedes to me, and perhaps this is what Shmuel is saying. And I say that the court does not appraise its value even for a borrower, and Abba concedes to me. Tashma, come and listen. The Hahua Gevera, 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 the Shai, Nerga, Mechavri, Mechavria, Tevra, Ata, Lekumia, Derak, Amir, Lia. Zeil Shelim Shelim Lia Nerega Malia Shema Nena Ayn Shemin Tashma A resolution from the following incident. There was a certain man who borrowed an axe from another and broke it. He came before Raf to rule if and how much he was liable to pay for it. Raf said to him, Go and pay him with the full fledged axe, meaning you must compensate the owner for the full value of the axe that you broke. The Muru suggests conclude from it that the court does not appraise its value for the sake of a borrower. Super important. When you borrow things, doesn't have to be the axe, but it's good that idea. Ad Rama Meda Meri Lea Rav Kohana Le Rav Asile Rav Deina Haki 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 Veshtik Veshetik Shema Meina Shemi. 
The Gmud rejects this on the contrary from the fact that Rav Kahan and Rav Assi said to Rav on that occasion, Is this the Halucha? And Rav remains silent. This suggests that he conceded to that Tanah that the borrower should not have to had should not have had to pay the full value of the axe. According, con, con, accordingly, conclude from it that the court appraises an item value for the sake of a borrower. Aitmar Amer Aula Amer Remi Eliazer Shemin Legenev Velexel Rav Kapri Amer Ein Shemin Behalachota Ein Shemin La Legenev La Legeslum Aven Shuel Shemin. An Amoric dispute was stated. The court appraises stone items value for Ganef and for a rubber. He does not appraise its value for them. The Muru concludes that Halukha said the court does not appraise value either for a thief or for a rubber. But the appraises value for a borrower in accordance with the Toma of Rav Kahana and Rav Assi. Ve'amr avla amr Rebi Eliazer Shilia Shaitsta Mektsota Beyom Rashum Vemektsota Beyom Sheni Monin La Men Harashum The Gemur recites initial halachot taught by our last sitting, citing Rabbi Eliazer. When the Shah gives birth of or miscarriage, miscarriage of fetus, Hasil Khalila and Hasil Shun, she's never rendered Tame. Even if she delivers only the afterbirth with no discernible fetus, she's rendered Bituma, right? Ritually, ritually impure due to the possibility that the fetus was dissolved in the afterbirth. And it is therefore considered as though she delivered it. The Irish does not keep The length of the period of impurity depends on the sex of the child. In the case where it was unclear what the sex is, she must observe the longer period of fourteen days. And 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 at the end of that period she may purify herself by merging by making Tevila be mine mikvah. And Aula Avmer the Travilyazir Avmer. If part of the afterbirth she merged on the first day of the Aisha's miscarriage and part of it emerge on the second day, one counts the period of tum tuma from the first day. Amr Lia Rava Ma Deat Lechumra Rava said to him to Ula Aula Aula Ula to Ula What is the rationale for your Tuma to begin counting from the first day? It would appear to be based on the following Tuma is engendered only once the woman has delivered the fetus. This is defined as the emergence of the majority of the fetus, or its head. Since, in this case, the fetus is not discernible, but discern dis 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 discernible, one must consider the possibility that it had already emerged on the first day. And therefore, one is required to act stringently regard her as regard her as impure tame from the first day. Humra deati leyadi kola hua deka metaharet la merashan. Rava questions the property of acting stringently in this case, as it is a stringency that results in a leniency, because if she begins counting from the first day, you will also render her fit to immerse and become pure, tahor, from 14 days after the first day. This leniency, because it is possible that the majority of the fetus emerged only on the second day, and therefore the period of Tuma began only then. She will therefore remain at Tame until the, 14, until the 15th day. 15th day. Ela Amer Rava Lechush Hosheshot Lechush Hosheshot Maimina La Maimia La Leshoni Lashoni. Rather, Rava Abner, with regard to being concerned for the possibility that she is Tame from the first day, she should be concerned. With regard to counting the period of Tuma, one counts only from the second day. Maika Meshoma Lum Dein Mixot Shelia. Vela 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 Tanina Shelia Shlia Shitsta Shitsta Mixeta Asura Beachila Semen Velad Velad Beisha Semen Velad Vehama Vehama The Guru asks, What is Ula teaching us through this halacha, through this halacha? Does he mean to teach us that part of the afterbirth after, after birth does not emerge without a part of the fetus inside? But he already learned that in the Mishnah, the Chunin, 
ein Sein, wenn ein Behemmer ist, schächtet the animal and everything inside it becomes permitted for consumption. This applies to an unborn fetus as well. If prior to the Shrita the majority of the fetus emerged, it is considered have been born. And therefore the entire fetus, even if part that is still within its mother, is not rendered uh, permitted for consumption by the uh, Shrita. Accordingly, it is if part of the afterbirth emerged prior to the Shrita, is prohibited to eat it, because an afterbirth is a sign of a fetus in a woman, and a sign of a fetus in a behema. Ai, ai, mem, ai, mem, thenina, hua, hua, amina, amina, deish, mekzot, shelia, bela, velat, vegesira, mekzoka, ato, kole, ka, mishalun. The Mood explains, if I would know this only from the Mishnah, I would say that there is a possibility that part of the afterbirth will merge without part of the fetus inside. And the Tomal that the Chochamim forbid eating the afterbirth is due to the rabbinic decree, forbidding a case where part of the afterbirth emerges from the room and part of it remains inside, with the possibility that one may confuse it with a case where all of the afterbirth emerges. Therefore, I would not titan it, teaches us that in fact part of the afterbirth does not emerge without part of the fetus inside.